And now, Chrysler presents Age of Peril, starring Phyllis Kirk. Got here as fast as I could. Uh, good. Now sit down, please. Thanks. Calhoun, I'm going to be obliged to reveal a top military secret. We had to get clearance from the president himself to tell you why you're being assigned to this case. Hey, pretty serious stuff, huh? It is. Naturally, any information I give you will have to be forgotten once your job is done. I understand, sir. Well, then, our scientists have perfected a new guided missile, the R.E.D. It's a powerful and destructive weapon and a vitally important part of our national defense. We've taken every possible security precaution to keep this thing top secret. The parts are made in 12 different factories, divided and scattered across the country. The plan has been cut into sections. This morning, someone actually succeeded in stealing a section of the plan from our San Jose, California plant. Hey, that's dangerous. It's your job to run that man down, Calhoun. Well, where do I start? Well, you'll take the 12 or 2 o'clock plane. That will put you in San Jose by 5. A man named Herbert Rand is in charge of our security out there. He'll give you all the detail. Right. Oh, and it might be wise to use that new lie detector. Get in touch with Dr. Chappell in San Francisco. Oh, yes, Dr. Chappell. He's the man who perfected the tethometer, isn't he? Uh, that's right. It's largely through his efforts that lie detector def- evidence has become a- fully accepted by our courts. Yes, I understand the courts really depend on it now. Well, I think it's safe to say it's the most important device in criminology today. It's a good weapon, Calhoun. Use it. Yes, sir. And good luck. Dad? Yes, dear? The tethometer checks out now. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, where is Mr. Calhoun? Well, he's out looking over the plant. Said he wanted to check the physical layout first. And who's to be given the lie detector test? I don't know. You'll have to ask Calhoun. He's running there, Joe. Oh, did you find anything? No. It's an inside job, all right. By the way, this place is guarded. An insect couldn't get through. Well, that's nice of you to say so. Plant security is my responsibility. I'd hate to think I'd left any loopholes. Oh, uh, Mr. Calhoun, Dr. Chappell. Dr. Chappell, I've been looking forward to meeting you. Thank you for coming. Not at all. I'm glad to be of service. I want you to meet someone who knows as much about the tathometer as I do, my daughter. Oh, how do you do, Miss Chappell? How do you do? Uh, who's to be given the test? You have a suspect? I have 580 suspects, Doctor. Well, do you mean that you're going to give everyone in this plant the lie detector test? You realize how long that'll take. We know it was an inside job. You have the names of every man and woman who came into this plant. Our only alternative is to test everyone till we get the one we want. Well, I, I must agree that your logic is unassailable, but uh, goodness, 580 tests... Well, uh, the sooner we get started, the better. Now you can arrange to have everyone brought in here. We'll start from the top. Top? What do you mean? I mean, we're going to test everyone, from the chairman of the board to the janitor. Oh, now, look here, Calhoun. I can't ask the brass. We'll, we'll have to test everyone. No exceptions. Well, this isn't going to make any friends for me, Calhoun. Or you, for that matter. Well, I didn't come here to make friends. All right, I, I'll get started on it right away. Are you all set, Doctor? No, quite. Good. Well, let's give the tethometer a test. Well, I've already checked it, Mr. Calhoun. It's in perfect order. Well, I'm sure it is, Miss Chappell, but my report has to show that I tested the machine personally. No, all right, sir. Just sit down. Huh? What's that, Dad? Your name? Joseph Jones. Your occupation? I manufacture bathtubs. <laughs> really, Mr. Calhoun, you'll wreck my machine telling those whoppers. <laughs> oh. Ah, oh, hi. How's it going? Any luck? Oh, he's still at it. He has the stamina of a plow horse. <laughs> he really does things the hard way. Oh. Well, I'll have to admit he knows his business, but golly, I'll be glad when this is over. I'm so tired of the same old questions I can scream. 
State your name. What's your occupation? Have you ever been in this room before? State your name. Oh, what's your occupation? Have you ever been in this room before? State your name. Uh, Philip Minow. What's your occupation? I'm the editor of the Platt newspaper. Have you ever been in this room before? No, never. Well, it's clear that he's telling the truth. Well, that'll be all. Thank you. It's all right. Well, let's get the next one. There aren't any more. What? There must be. Well, we've taken 580 tests. I think that checks with everybody here, doesn't it, Rand? That's right. So where do we go from here? But this was an inside job. I'm almost sure of that. The guilty person works on this plant. Well, then I'd suggest you find number 581. There is no 581. <laughs> well, I know that. Unless you count me. Well? Are you saying that everybody else took the test? Why shouldn't you? Well, it's a matter of principle. I'm security officer here. Look, Calhoun, you're going to have to start trusting somebody, and it might as well be me. This is not a question of trust. Well, I won't do it. Nobody gets in or out of this plant without my knowing it. If you question my loyalty, you might as well question the efficiency of that machine. How about that, Doctor? Can the tethometer miss? There's one chance in 100,000. I've been running that machine for five years. It's never failed me yet. In that case, Mr. Rand, I'm afraid I'll have to insist that you take the test. No, I refuse. Well, I can't force you. But I shall have to report your refusal and get a court order. Operator, will you get me the chief of the Bureau of Scientific Investigation in San Francisco, please? There's a tap on this phone. What? Pick up the other phone and see. Am I right? Uh, operator, I'm sorry. Will you cancel that call, please? Thank you. Those snoopers will be tracked down in ten minutes. I'll put my men on it right away. Oh, no, 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 wait. Wait for what? They're probably wired to the main trunk line. They're listening to everything. Well, that's just it. Let's give them something to listen to. Now, look, I'm going to call you on this other phone. Now, now please, play along with what I have to say. Rand speaking. Oh, Mr. Rand, uh, this is Calhoun. I just wanted to ask you about those plans for that new atomic weapon. Have they arrived from Washington yet? Yes, I can. Um, I've put them away. In the usual place? That's right. In the vault. Oh, good. What about that other matter? I'm uh, convinced now that it was done by somebody on the outside. You better double the guard around the plant. Right. Well, they got it, I'm sure of that. Question is, will they take the bait? We'll see. First, let's make sure we're ready for them. Now, we'll take everything out of here. Now, the next time somebody tries to get into this vault... They've got your man. Rand's men just brought him in. Good work. <laughs> well, I guess this will wrap it up. Well, I hate to admit it, but putting that automatic camera in the vault was a very good idea. Well, I've just been lucky so far. Oh, is your father upstairs, too? Mm -hmm. He's waiting for you now. I'm sorry I asked him to come down here now. With the evidence we have on Elwood, I don't think I'll need the lie detector. Come on, Elwood. Why don't you confess? We've got you dead to rights. Quit stalling. I don't know what you're talking about. Why did you bring me here? I haven't done anything. How did you tap those telephone wires? What telephone wires? Oh. Well, here he is, Carolyn. Took us exactly six hours to track him down. Where'd you find him? At home, asleep, just as innocent as you please. How do you like that? He comes to work, tries to steal the plans, and then he goes home and goes to sleep. I didn't do anything. I oh, tell you. It's no use, Elwood. This is your picture, isn't it? That picture could have been taken any place. Yes, but it'd have to be taken right here when you try to get into that vault. I never went near that vault. That's the truth. 
Give me the lie detector test and you'll see. Why are you so anxious to take the lie detector test? Because I'm innocent and I know my rights. If I want the test, you've got to give it to me. And if the lie detector says I'm telling the truth, then you've got to let me go. All right. Will you get him ready, doctor, please? What do you suppose this is all about? Hanged if I know. Why did he go home and go to sleep? Why didn't he try to beat it? He must have known something was wrong when that flash bulb went off in the vault. We're all set. Thank you. State your name. George Elwood. Do you know what's manufactured in this plant? No, I'm a lathe operator. I make parts according to specifications, but I don't know what they're used for. Were you in this room last night? No, I never was in this room before. Well, according to this, he's telling the truth. Of course I'm telling the truth. I never did anything crooked in my life. I swear I didn't. I don't understand it. He's lying and we know it. But the machine... He's beaten the lie detector. Hello again, and welcome back to the world of today. You know, when some women pass a jeweler's window like this, they feel very frustrated because they'd like to be able to reach into the window like this and get a new watch band the easy way, like this. <laughs> well, since you can't very well do that, let me tell you how you can get this watch band and not pay the kind of price you'd expect. For though this expansion band has the quality of fine jewelry, any woman can afford it. It's the greatest value you've ever seen in women's expansion watch bands. It costs so little, yet it carries the same guarantee as the finest watch bands. It's called the Elegant, and it's made only by Chrysler. And it's only $4.95, only $4.95. This classic style is always in fashion. Chrysler's Elegant goes with all your clothes. And now let's be practical. The expansion feature lets you easily slip your watch out of the way for washing dishes. Remember, Chrysler's Elegant is all yours for only $4.95, federal tax included. You can make your watch look better than new. And get all the beauty of jewelry, too, with Elegant by Chrysler. And now, back to our story, Age of Peril, starring Phyllis Kirk. I don't understand it, Chief. The man told one lie after another, and that needle never even budged. But what are we going to do with him? What can we do? He'll have to be released. But the man's guilty, Chief. Can't we try for a conviction without the, 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 the lie detector? No, this picture isn't enough. You know what will happen. The defense attorney will insist that Elwood take the lie detector test, and that will clear it. This is legal, right? And he's sure to exercise it. Calhoun, you won't believe this, but it's not the first time this has happened. What? Here. Take a look at this. Denver. Chicago. New York. San Francisco. Well, what does this mean? In the past six months, 48 guilty men have beaten that lie detector. What? Well, that's impossible. Well, what if the entire underworld learned to fool this machine? Yes, that's what's got me worried. But I don't... Dr. Chappell says that the chances are only one in a hundred thousand. Just the same it's being done. Is this the list of the men who beat the machine? Yes, that's all of them. Oh, and you'd better keep that list. But watch it carefully. It's top secret. Yes, sir. It reads like the who's who of the underworld. Exactly. We've got to run this thing down. If not, this country's headed into a new age of peril in which the criminal will have the upper hand. Chief, is there anything about these 48 cases that follows any set pattern? Well, only in one respect. In every case, it was at least six hours or more from the commission of the crime to the time the criminal was picked up. Hey, that's exactly what happened in the Elwood case. It took Rand six hours to pick him up. Well, that may be a lead. Any idea how to follow it up? 
Well, I have the guilty man. And I have Dr. Chappell as an expert. And a certain security officer who refused to take the test. I'll start with that. Yes. Oh, yes, of course. Pass him through. Well, here we go again. Calhoun just came in. <laughs> Where's your father? I don't have any idea, and I don't understand it. He said he'd be here. That's a lot of nonsense anyway. We're licked. We might as well admit it. Why? Just because one man beat the test? Maybe he's the one in a hundred thousand. Haven't you seen the paper? No. Well, here, you better read it for yourself. Man named Belliver committed murder yesterday in San Diego. They picked him up 12 hours later, gave him the test, and, uh, well, just for the record, the odds are now two in 100,000. Do you mean to tell me that this man, this man beat the test too? The police released him this morning, and they know he's guilty, just as we know Elwood is guilty. Oh, come on. We're waiting for Dr. Chapel. Have you seen this? Belliver, huh? He's done time before, hasn't he? Yeah, sure. I arrested him myself once when I was on the Los Angeles police force. Miss Chappell, your father said he'd give this matter some thought. Do you know if he's come up with anything yet? I don't have any idea at all. I haven't seen him since yesterday morning. He flew up to Oregon on a case. Yes. Oh, good. Yes, pass him through. Well, Dr. Chappell's on his way in. Oh, good. Where do we go from here, Calhoun? Have you got a new lead yet? Yes, I have. But before I start with the new one, I'd like to finish up with the old. And how is that? I'd like to know why you refuse to submit to the test. Oh, no, we're not on that again. I told you why. Besides, we've got Elwood, haven't we? Yes, but that doesn't clear you. Okay. Okay, I'll take the test. Will that satisfy you? Maybe. It all depends on the answers I get. Elwood was pretty anxious to take the test, too, remember? Now, look here, Calhoun. I'm getting sick and tired of your... Gentlemen... Doctor? Sorry to be late. My plane was delayed. Hello, dear. Dad, is everything all right? Yes, of course. Just a routine case. Well, where's your coat? My coat? Uh, well, I, I must have forgotten to wear one. And you know better than that. It gets cold up north. Uh, doctor, I'm going to take the lie detector test. Maybe that'll convince Calhoun that I'm not handing out any government secrets. Oh, uh, well, of course, sir. Just sit down. Already. Thank you. Now, why have you refused to submit to this test before now? I didn't think it was necessary. I resented your suspicions. How did Elwood get the combination to the vault? Did you give it to him? I did not. I didn't even know Elwood was alive. He was just another workman in the plant. Well, I see no reason to go on with this, Mr. Calhoun. He's obviously telling the truth. Oh, well, what about Elwood? Was he telling the truth? How can I trust this machine? If it was wrong once, it can be wrong again. I've had enough of this, Calhoun. Now, either you lay off or make a definite charge. Here, take these... Well, why did you stall for time? Elwood had time, too. Six hours. And in those six hours, he found some way to beat this machine. Oh, that's ridiculous. Are you suggesting a human being can beat this machine? I am. Everybody's innocent. Even this man, Belliver, in San Diego. He committed murder, and he's innocent. You can't just say you're innocent and get away with it. Not on this machine. You saw Elwood do it, didn't you? He had six hours. I'm inclined to believe that during those six hours, something happened. Somebody helped him. Well, I'd like to help you, but uh, I can't follow a screwy lead like that. Well, maybe the thing to do is to go down to San Diego and look into this Belliver case. Uh, what about that, Doctor? Does looking into the Belliver case look like a good idea to you? Why, yes, yes, I suppose so. It moved. The needle moved. Dad. It's all right, dear. It's all right. Belliver. That's what did it. When you mentioned Belliver, the needle jumped. Yes, Doctor. What does Belliver mean to you? I'm sure I don't know. Oh, is it possible, Doctor, that you didn't go to Oregon after all? You weren't wearing a coat when you came back from your little trip. Maybe you went south to San Diego. I Answer my question, Doctor. Yes. Yes, I was in San Diego. Oh, Dad. I did help Belliver. I helped Elwood, too. I helped them beat the lie detector. 
Why would you want to do that? Try to understand. It was an experiment, one of the most important in the history of law enforcement. I have five colleagues all engaged in this same work all over the country. I'm sorry, Doctor. No, wait. If you take me into custody, the newspapers will learn of it, and all my work will have been in vain. But do you realize how serious this is? Why, you've endangered the national security. You and your colleagues are the most dangerous men alive today. Look, I have in my pocket here a list, a top-secret list of 49 names, criminally guilty men, all of them walking around free because they learned how to beat this machine. Yes. My colleagues and I are the most dangerous men alive today, but dangerous only to the underworld. Will you allow me to show you what we're doing? Oh. Well, what do you think, Rand? Yes. Mr. Rand, will you take that list? Take the list? Wait a minute. I want you to steal that list and put it in your pocket. All right. Very well. All right, sir. Will you please sit over here? Now, you admit stealing the list. Yes, yeah, sure. Now, just keep watching this glass, Mr. Rand. Keep watching and listen carefully. Just listen to my voice. Listen quietly. Listen and relax. You did not steal that list. You have no recollection of doing it. Even if you're given the lie detector test. You're an honest man. You've never stolen anything. Never in your whole life. Mr. Rand, will you please return the list you stole from Mr. Calhoun? What list? I'm saying that you stole Mr. Calhoun's list. You're kidding? Why would I want to do that? The evidence is there in your pocket. You mean that I act... There's your answer. He has no recollection of what he did. And if you were to check all the other people who have beaten the lie detector, you'll find they've never committed another crime. We wipe away all past memory of a criminal background and every criminal tendency. We make them innocent, and they remain innocent. You mean they're no longer criminals? But what about the crime they committed to begin with? What does it matter so long as they never commit another? Don't you see what this can mean? Belliver and Elwood will never do another illegal thing. Consider the irony of it, Mr. Calhoun. We punish the criminal by making him an honest man. That means I'll be out of a job someday. Exactly, Mr. Rand. The day is coming when we won't need policemen or detectives or criminologists because there won't be any more crime. There won't be any more crime? All I ask is time enough to call my colleagues together so that we can present our findings to the government. Will you do it, Mr. Calhoun? Oh, come on, Calhoun. Just for once in your life, forget you're a policeman. Well, it's worth a try. Operator, will you get me the chief of the Bureau of Scientific Investigation in Washington, D.C.? And so closes our Tales of Tomorrow. Next week, Tales of Tomorrow brings you Boris Karloff in Memento. A gripping, suspenseful story of a man's thirst for vengeance. And now, a final word from the Chrysler Kids. Jack Chrysler. Jack Chrysler. On my hand. On your hand. Initial just for me, and so it's my van. It's your van. It's Chrysler. It's Chrysler. For me, too. For you, too. Makes your watch look better than new. Quality, style, and value, too. For the best band in the land. It's Chrysler. 
makes your watch look better than you. Makes it personal just for you. It's Chrysler. The preceding program, originally telecast by ABC in New York, has come to you by special video recording. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.